Hi, I'm Kyle Zimmerman, and I would just like to show uh, my editor uh, that I've been working on for XNA Game Studio. Uh, this editor doesn't make games, it makes uh, scenes for games, so it's useful for making uh, things like levels. Um, it has several uh, features that I thought would help a lot in speeding up the development process of a large game uh, with a lot of scenes in it. Uh, it uh, behaves a lot like a, a standard uh, video editing program or uh, photo editing program. Uh, down here we have layers, uh, objects in the scene, different tools and such. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Let's start by putting down uh, a background. Uh, so we go on our back layer and uh, repeating sprites are useful for backgrounds because they repeat forever and ever and ever. So we'll click this. Uh, it prompts us with a dialog box here that will list all the assets uh, of the game that I've hooked the editor into. So I'm going to go into backgrounds and uh, when I click this we get a nice little display here of all the different, different backgrounds that we have. Uh, so we just uh, put that in there. And uh, now uh, we can, uh, we have an infinite scrolling background uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, so let's add another layer on top of that, and in this layer, uh, let's put down a tile grid. So we're going to import uh, a tile grid that's already been made. So this is a list of all the tile grids in the uh, uh, in the content of my game already. Um, so you can click on whatever you want. You get a little sample image of what it looks like here. So we'll just include that in there, and uh, now we have an object that can be moved around the world to any position, uh, any way we want it to be. Um, so uh, it's quite useful. Um, if we're doing some editing, we have the normal stuff like hiding a layer so that it doesn't get in the way. We can lock a layer so that it doesn't, uh, you can't drag the object, but it's still visible. Uh, the editor has useful tools for doing things like uh, parallax scrolling, so we can set values uh, in a properties box here that uh, gives you a lot of access to almost any uh, any function of any uh, property you want. It's done with a property grid, so any object you can edit in code, uh, properties-wise, uh, you can edit in the editor as well. So if we set that to that, we get a nice little scrolling effect uh, that we have full control over the speeds of everything and all that. So it's quite interesting uh, to work with that. Uh, we have access to just regular sprites that don't repeat. So we have a lot of sprites in here. Uh, I don't know, there's a claw, you move the claw down here, so it's pretty neat. Um, the parallax also works the other way, uh, so you can set parallax to higher levels. So let's put the, uh, let's put this claw on the higher level, we just right click it, arrange, uh, and then we bring it to the front. So this is now on the uh, uppermost level, and we'll set this to have a, a decimal uh, parallax value, 0.8. And now it will scroll at different values. So if we put it here, we can see that uh, as the user would be coming along at 100%, it would add a little bit of depth to it. So, uh, so that's interesting. Um, we also have the ability to bring in just world entities. Uh, so an example of something like that would be a crate. Bring in a blue crate here, and bam, there's a blue crate. And uh, we can put it wherever we want. We have some snaps, so it'll snap right to places. Oops, see we put this on the parallax layer, we don't want that, so we move it down, and now it's back on the normal layer. Uh, copy and paste works just the way you'd think it would, so you can place it wherever you, objects wherever you want, and then move them after that point. So it's got some useful functions if you were building a level. Uh, we have a system of plugins so that uh, in order to make uh, development even faster. We can just uh, code up a plugin extension of anything we want. So for example, this is a checkpoint extension I've made. Uh, this is a checkpoint in our game and we just place it wherever we want and when we load this scene into the game, the checkpoint will just work the way it is. We don't have any extra code to do for that. Um, so, uh, so that's always good too. Um, it's, we can also create new tile grids using the tile grid editor. Uh, so this is an infinite uh, section where we can zoom and do all kinds of things. This is a grid to help us uh, help us make things easily. Uh, so we just load up some tiles. 
So let's load up the static set. We can just click on the folder instead of the things at the bottom there. Hit OK. Full static sets in there so we can just make whatever sort of levels we want to do. I uh, have all kinds of neat things like that. And then just hit OK. Oh, before I do that, we have a detail layer too, so you can import graphics that don't have uh, status. So let's just bring in the pipe set. And now we have a bunch of pipes that we can just go over top of uh, what we already had. We can just use this to make some old school tile based graphics. And then we hit OK. And in the world, we have that tile grid, which we can place right there and do stuff like copy and paste. So that's that's definitely useful when you're making levels. So I mean, very easily we can include all all these uh, level features without doing any coding at all. Um, we have other advanced plugin things like a switch. Uh, in the properties, we have all things like the state of the switch. We can switch it off, and it'll switch right off right there. We can put an entity dispenser down that will drop crates. So we just drop a crate. Click that. Oh, there it is. Then we right click on this, add target. It says it added the target successfully. So now in the game, when the user pulls a switch, this uh, here will drop down a nice uh, uh, nice crate for the, for the player. Uh, we can add another layer to make this look nicer and then plop in a new tile grid. Oops. Plop in a new tile grid of something like this just a plain thing like that. Cover it up there so it looks less just like a floating block and bam there we go it still will work perfectly fine and it's good to go. Uh, we also have stuff like a level loader where you can type in the name of a scene that you want to make it load to when the user enters the area and it plops down a box where you can put wherever you want in the world and you have full access to things like the height of it and the width of it so you can make it fit however you want wherever you want in the level. Uh, and then we have uh, saving functions, so you can just save as. Wow. And uh, there we go. The file is, uh, oops, the file will show up as a uh, XML file. So this is what that scene describes. It has all the information of all the uh, all the things we want and using the content pipeline uh, when we load this level back into our game uh, it's it will just sit there and work uh, so that's the first demo uh, hopefully uh, it's uh, interest you um, if you have any questions about how you can do some of these things in an editor uh, let me know and I'll be glad to help you out thanks for watching